welcome to part four of the Kazon torpedo build-up. I've uh, managed to make quite a bit of progress since the last uh, update. Uh, on the last one we had uh, the front end all taped off and ready for paint. And on that I've used a combination really of the um, Alclad uh, semi-matte aluminium and then what I did was I then used the uh, Alclad Magnesium as well uh, and it's very lightly dusted the whole of it to bring the tone down of the aluminium um, but what I also did do was concentrate more on the front end really um, and give that more of a little bit of a dusting than the back end so the front end is slightly darker than the back that seemed to work out quite well. Uh, I mean if you look at the the front head on there you can see that that's fairly dark and then when you come round to the side there you can see it's still reasonably light. And that does go all the way around uh, the sides and also uh, underneath as well. So that's looking good. Uh, now on the uh, destructions uh, it does say that you need a green chromate. Well, I haven't got one of those and I'm not going to go out and buy one just to uh, do a couple of patches. So what I have done is um, I've used the uh, Tamiya Light Green, which is the X15 uh, on that one. And that seems to work just as well, to be fair. Um, on these parts here, which is the ion discharge um, vents or something like that, um, I've basically used the um, Gunmetal X10 uh, by Tamiya. And then we've got the yellow bits, um, which was the Tamiya um, Lemon Yellow, which is the X8. And then the red bits that we can see dotted various places. Uh, I've used the uh, Tamiya flat red which is the XF7 and then we've got these little goldish parts as well uh, dotted various places around the ship and I've used the Tamiya uh, Titan Gold uh, which is the X31 on those bits and then we've also got some other little aluminium bits which was done with a flat aluminium XF16 uh, and that kind of pretty much will take care of that <clears throat> We have got some uh, little light um, grey patches, uh, sorry, green patches on there. Uh, I've used the um, XF6, um, which is a field grey, uh, sorry, a field green. Um, that does need another coat of paint on it, but I'm also going to try and weather that. And also those little two bobbles down there, I'm going to try and weather as well. Um, so all I need to do really on the back end now is once this paint is fully dried is just bobble the end of the uh, or mushroom the end of the uh, fiber optics and then I can push those in the good thing is is the fact that they're so stiff that once I slide them in they will stay in place I won't need to put any glue on them with the uh, back of the uh, impulse engines I did use uh, the uh, Alclad paint again and that was the jet exhaust uh, what I did with that is I didn't actually spray that on even though Alclad is actually just meant purely for um, an airbrush I did actually just dry brush that on um, I will need another little going over just to uh, make sure it settles in nicely um, but that, that's basically all I did with that um, the bottom of the ship as well is looking pretty much well good as, as, uh, as well I've got a few more colours to go on there and then if we just turn that out that way you can see the little red uh, stripes on the door there and then we got some more yellow there and a little bit more yellow on that side uh, these uh, parts here have done, been done in the um, Tamir XF6 which is uh, the copper um, unfortunately in the kit there is meant to be a radiator uh, that sits there. Uh, now unfortunately it's missing from my kit. Um, I was thinking about scratch building one uh, but I just can't be bothered to be quite honest. 
um, you're not losing anything by it not being there and it might turn up it could have just fallen out the box so if it does turn up then I will put it on but you know I'm not too worried if it doesn't turn up um, I've just got that little bit there to paint as well um, once we're fully finished I'll take off the masking tape that's on the uh, the thrusters there um, there's another layer of paint to go on this I need to get some purple uh, and do some purple on this uh, I have decided that I will be doing uh, a brown wash on this as well and the uh, if you look at the studio model it does actually also call for uh, a purple wash as well so I'm going to sort of kind of try and um, mess this up a bit and I think it'll look quite good I think it's it's one of those little ships really it doesn't matter whether you get it horribly wrong it's still going to look right I think uh, if that does make sense but that's where we are at the moment uh, I'm really happy with the progress on this to be honest um, you know it is coming along I mean there are another few areas that I need to do paint wise but you know this 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 kit is coming along quite nicely and I can't envision it taking too much longer to actually do because as I say it is a small kit there's not a lot to it the lighting uh, was so simple for this um, apart from the little mistake that we had uh, with <laughs> the iron discharges uh, up there um, so I'm going to leave it there for the minute and I will come back to you uh, as soon as I've made some more progress on this have all the secondary colours finished now so with uh, the last one that we didn't have was the purple um, for that I've used the uh, Tamiya uh, X16 purple uh, so we got that on there now everything's had two coats of uh, the corresponding paint that needs to be put on there so that's looking really really good now it's starting to look really sharp um, so that's what it's looking like across this ship and um, the underside so I now just need to wait for all of that to dry off um, properly and once that's dried off then it's going to be time to weather the heck out of this um, looking at the studio model version the weathering on this is actually done with browns so that's what I'm going to be using on this uh, model is sort of like a brown wash all over it. I think maybe on the front end of the model, I think I might put a little bit of weathering on there, but do that with black. These little red bits here and these green bits sort of down the sides, uh, these bits just here. Um, I need to try and turn those into a pastel shade. So... I am going to try and uh, do a white whitewash on those just to see if um, that will actually bring that down. If not, then it's not a problem. I can just go back over them again um, and just leave them as is. But I think a white a, a whitewash on those would actually help bring those down to a bit of a pastel shade. Um, it'd be good if that does work because I'd need to replicate that as well on the uh, the Kazon fighter. Um, so that's about it for the moment. Uh, as soon as I have um, started the uh, the wash on this, I will come back to you. Well, she's all finished now and on the stand. I'm not going to do the usual sort of uh, black uh, background uh, scene to this because uh, it is uh, such a small little kit, really, to be quite honest. Um, but nonetheless, it does look really, really good. I'm really happy with the way that this one's turned out. And it's a really, really cheap model to build as well. Uh, I think all in, this has cost me definitely less than £30 to build. You know, the kit itself was only sort of seven or eight pounds off of eBay. Uh, the base itself cost me £1.45. I think the most expensive part of this actually was uh, the power supply for it. Um, you know, and that was, uh, a, that was 10 quid. Um, but yeah, all in, definitely less than 30 quid to, to, to build this model. And it's given me lots of fun doing it as well because it is such a, a small kit and it's a completely different kit to the ones that you normally sort of see and the ones that you normally build as well. I mean, for instance, I've only seen two other builds of this particular kit uh, on YouTube. Uh, so there's now three. Uh, so, you know, this is my particular take on it. I'm not saying, you know, it's not exactly... Uh, as accurate as it should be really for the studio model but it kind of almost is 
Um, I could have actually, I suppose, done a lot more to it. And one day I might pick up another one of these and, and actually, um, you know, have a, have a real serious bash at this and, and, and see what we can do if we was to uh, actually sort of try and build this seriously. I mean, this for me was just uh, a bit of fun more than anything else. Um, um, some of the other things as well is the fact that I did leave some of the dents and the dinks in the in the plastic as well, um, especially where we've got uh, the seams. Some of them I left uh, purposely sort of rough and ready looking because it really did sort of deserve that beaten up look to it. To be honest, so yeah, I'm I'm happy with it. Um, you know, it's as I say, less than thirty quid, four weeks to build it. Um, you know, and it's it's come out looking all right. And you can see we got one of the uh, the little um, um, thrusters there, and then we've also got all of the little lights at the back. This one I'm not too happy with, to be quite honest. But I'm still sort of uh, learning uh, about fiber optics. Seems to seem to be the vein of my life, really. Uh, and then we've also got on the underside there, as you can see, the two thrusters. Uh, at the back end there as well so uh, you know it's a good little, good little kit one of these um, I, as I, said, I really would recommend this kit to anybody to build because it is quite a teeny tiny kit you can literally slap this anywhere you like really to be honest um, you know and as I say if you get a little stand like this that's hollow um, you can actually put a battery inside that so you can just move it all over the place rather than having it tied down to to one place like i have with uh, with the lead there uh, but that's the uh, the end of the build on this one um i will get back to the uh the voyager series after i've built the uh 1350 enterprise so i've really only got the i think the uh, marquee fighter and the kazon fighter to build as well um, there's a few interesting mods that I'm actually going to do to the uh, the Kazon fighter um, <clears throat> it's going to be the first time for me actually uh, making molds to make my own parts for that particular kit so hopefully that goes off uh, without a hitch but uh, as I say that's about it for this one um, so I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching this build as much as I've had uh, building this one because it has been a fun little kit um, and I will catch up with you in the next video. So until then, thanks for watching and please do take care.